Adobe just released the latest version of Photoshop CC. It includes a couple of new features, one of which is the support for high density monitors. There's also the support for the Microsoft Surface Dial. So that's gonna no doubt please Windows users. But one of the most exciting features is the new Select Subject Tool, which uses AI or machine learning to help us make selections in our photographic images. In the past, it's been quite a difficult thing if you've got a complex background to remove a subject from the background. Quite often we use a number of tools from the pen tool, even the quick select, and possibly the magnetic lasso tool. A number of different tools to make this happen. This particular new feature, select subject, is supposed to do so in one step. So today I wanna to take a look at how well it does at performing this task. Okay, so I've got Photoshop CC 2018 open. It's the latest version 19.1.0 and I'm going to load up a few different types of images to see how this new select subject function works. The first one is relatively straightforward. It's obviously an image of a camera which doesn't have a particularly complex background behind it, but it is rather annoying and would take some time if I was to use the regular quick select tool. I'd have to go in and change the tolerance a number of times select different areas of the image, use the shift key multiple times to finally get my cutout. But using this new subject select, all I have to do is press the button once and let's see what happens. Okay, the selection has been made. I've placed a gray layer beneath my image and we're now going to take a look and see how good this selection is. Now at first glance, it's done a really good job of the general selection. And I could certainly use it for mock-up purposes as is. However, if we zoom in, we can see that the edge of the image is not quite perfect. There's some artifacts, there's some aliasing that still comes through, and it really looks like a quick uh, an easy cutout that you'd use for sample purposes only. Some areas are better than others. If you look at the circular area of the lens, that's really quite good. I could pretty much get away with using as is, but as I move around, you can see some areas that have been left out, so it's gonna need some further work. I could certainly use this as a basic selection, grab some different tools like an eraser tool, for example, and start to perfect the selection, which wouldn't take too much time. So if you're prepared to add a little bit of extra time and effort, I think it's actually going to help your workflow in general for this type of image. Let's go ahead and open up a completely different type of image, something more sophisticated that really does require the discernment of a human eye to understand what's going on. So I've got some photos that I took during a recent outdoor fashion shoot, which would be quite interesting. And they have uh, complex backgrounds with textured graffiti walls and a model in front of them. So I don't think that it would be a situation where I would want to take a cutout of this image, but I thought it'd be a good one to test this feature. So again, to, to activate this functionality, we use the selection tool icon in the left-hand toolbar. And now instead of using the quick select by tapping on the image, I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner and go for the select subject tool, which is going to attempt to do this all in one step. Now, as you can see, it certainly understands what the subject matter is and has tried to make a selection around it but there are a lot of areas that are going to need some work here. So if I copy and paste it across and zoom in a little, you can see where the deficiencies are. So it's actually cut in too much in certain areas, so that's not gonna be salvaged very easily. And as you can see, it's also neglected to cut out certain areas of the background. So overall, it hasn't really done an adequate job that I could use this in any way. It's good for a quick sample, for a quick uh, observation of how my cutout might appear, but I'd probably rather go back to the traditional ways of cutting out with the various combination of tools that I've used in the past from the magnetic lasso tool, quick select, and so on to perform this particular cutout. Let's try one more of these fashion shots before I give up on that whole idea. 
Let's try something with uh, a little bit less shadow behind the subject matter to make it easier for Photoshop. So again, I'm going to hit the uh, selection tool in the left hand toolbar and I'll now go to the select subject option in the top toolbar and let's see what it does here. Okay, this one's looking a little bit better. I'm going to copy and paste that and move the selection across to see what we're dealing with. And that selection is actually quite decent. You can see that it hasn't cut into the subject matter in any way. And it's only, it's only left a little bit of the background in just under the trouser area and to the left hand side and a little bit on the right hand side, which could really easily be taken care of with the eraser tool and just a few more seconds of work. So that's actually not too bad a result there. If we zoom in, let's have a look at the edges. So I guess here's the problem again with this tool. Once you do zoom in uh, to anywhere near 300%, or beyond, you'll see that the anti-aliasing uh, on the edges hasn't really done a great job there. And it also brings in some of the background that you really need to spend a fair bit of time cleaning up. And you can see in another example here, it's cut out a little bit of my foreground, which I'd need to restore. So now that I realize that this is not gonna be a simple one-step process, for any selection that's rather sophisticated, it looks like we're gonna to have to use the select and mask option, which allows us to tweak our selection with some additional tools. Each time you make an edit in select and mask, it creates a new layer with a mask, which is great because if you've made a mistake, you can always go backwards and restore your previous selection. Now on the right hand side, you'll see a number of parameters that will apply to the overall quality of the mask. You can change the transparency of the mask to help you see what you're doing, adjust the edge detection, select smart radius, and there's also some further global enhancements such as smooth, feather, and contrast, which are going to help you with your mask if the AI wasn't able to do this automatically for you. Sometimes this is still not enough, so on the left-hand side, you'll see a number of tools, including paint brushes, where you can plus and minus the background and foreground, and there's also a number of selection tools to further enhance the cutout. So it does bring us back to where we used to be with our cutouts, using a combination of tools to get a final result. So in summary, I think it's done a great job for a quick selection, being able to use it in mock-ups, but in terms of using it in professional work, if you're doing anything of high resolution, of high caliber where it needs to go to print, or where the detail is paramount, then I think it's certainly lacking a little bit, and you'll probably have to back up this one-step process with some further edits, which kind of defeats the whole point. So hopefully in the future, Adobe will refine this tool a little bit further, and it will come along to the point that you can use it in itself as a single click solution for selecting objects out of your photographic images.